Good morning all. Shall we see what's going on inside the modular shed? There's a lot of bits of um, expanded foam filler here. So I think something has been chipping away at that. Um, okay, so what's going on in here? Uh, there's the scam system voltage monitor. So the scam system ran for 2 hours 47 minutes on its last run. Um, there's the battery pack for the scam system. There's the ant miner for it, which might still mine in crypto, it's all still working. Um, I don't look at it a lot, perhaps I'll do an update on that at some point. But what I have noticed is that the supercomputer board there doesn't seem to work. I'll just switch the light on, which is there. And, oh, I've disconnected the cable, so let's connect that back up. That bulb there is quite dim, which means that the voltage below the bulb is higher than zero volts. The voltage above it is 12 volts. The voltage below it would start off normally at zero volts, but the super cap module there must be reasonably well charged. And in fact, if I keep the camera on there, yeah, there it is. The two um, protection circuits have now come on. So that super cap is at five volts. And I don't quite know whether the voltage on the caps is likely to rise to worryingly high levels because I don't know what the uh, discharge circuit's current is and what the current is going through that bulb. I could work it all out. But the point is this supercapacitor, uh, this supercomputer uh, display board is not working. So I think I should take that into the workshop and fix it up. So the idea of this thing is that the uh, supercapacitor, which is 5.4 volts, 2.7 volts per capacitor, is charged from a 12 volt uh, supply, that's lead acid batteries, through a 21 watt brake light bulb which limits the current and allows there to be a potential difference between the 12 volt source and uh, this initially at zero volts, but when this is fully charged, this rises up to five volts. And then there's a seven volt differential, which the light bulb absorbs. And of course it wastes a bit of energy because the light bulb is always lit while this thing is being charged. Um, so this should be reasonably fully charged because we saw the lights on earlier. This is a bit mucky actually. Where's my brush? I think I'll just give this a bit of a brush because it sits out in the shed and uh, stuff drops off the shed, ceiling, roof, onto everything really. Um, not water, just sort of muck because spiders get in there and they build webs and the webs fall down and dust falls down and all that sort of thing. So uh, I suppose we could measure the voltage across here as the first thing I do. Okay, make sure it's not on uh, amps, it's not, so that shouldn't go bang. And uh, yeah, 5.3 volts, so that's uh, pretty much fully charged, 5.4 nominally that goes up to. So the question is, why aren't these LEDs lighting up? I mean, over the sort of year, um, I have had, I think, a small row of lights there lighting up, but none of the rest. So it's bad soldered ones, essentially, isn't it? Let's face it. Uh, okay, let's clamp that in positive and poke that in negative. And at the moment, nothing is lighting up. So what's that all about? So one thing I've noticed is that uh, these LEDs are all sitting out of the board. They've all popped out of the uh, hardboard former which I've put them in so I'll push these back in and why do these come out well it's either thermal cycles you know day night day night warm cold warm cold gradually work their way out or it's moisture cycles so damp dry damp dry they might work their way out probably more likely thermal actually so let's push these in so I have noticed that I've got positive on this row and negative on this row which kind of means that these bridging pieces it's relying on those to actually make a circuit so perhaps I need to touch up the joints on those. Aha uh -huh, I think I found it. Uh, let's get a magnifying glass on there. Can you see that? I think there's a gap. 
between those two. I can't do it without shading it. But there appears to be a gap there. So let's solder that up and see if that helps. Switch on the iron, let it come up to temperature. And mm, how am I going to do this? Yeah, I can do that. Press down on that, that shouldn't get too hot. Okay, solder you up. Oh, it's getting hot. Anyway, that's soldered, so let's try it now. Do you know, I think this would be better if it were on a printed circuit board than this hardboard panel. I should make, I think I'm going to make a printed circuit board. It's very easy because these are just all in parallel. So it's a two-sided PCB with a big ground plane. All the anodes uh, will be linked to one plane and all the cathodes to the other. Pretty straightforward. Right, don't want to short on this, but... Ah, okay, now that's interesting. Why, if the positive is on this second row there, is that row not actually lighting up? That's indicative of... I don't know what that's indicative of. Oh, I suppose maybe no negative is getting through. Interesting, I'll look for another break. Yeah, this is the last thing I saw actually when it was actually lighting up was just this row lit up. I have noticed another bad connection which is there. Oh, there it is, look. That's pretty straightforward. So yeah, there is a break in the negative there, so I should be able to solder this while it's on. Let's bridge across. Oh, I shorted it out. And that appears to be all of them on. I did notice at times uh, there might be one not working, but actually they, I think, are all working. I'm just scanning down. Oh, there's one there. That's not working. Oh, I wonder if I shorted that out while I was messing about with it. No, that wouldn't make it fail, would it? So how long does this um, array of flashing LEDs run for on this uh, 500 farad? Now, of course, if you add capacitors together in series, you halve the farad. So this would be 250 farads at 5.4 volts. And of course, the voltage is falling all the time. Um, from memory, about an hour. And of course, as these get dimmer, their uh, current draw becomes less. So it sort of flickers and flashes very dimly for quite a long time. Um, you could work this out from half CV squared as the energy in this uh, supercapacitor. And then you could add up, um, these are running at 50% duty cycle. So assuming they're 20 milliamps each. And there's also a chip in here, of course, the flashing chip. Um, but we can probably ignore the current that that takes. Half the 20 milliamps because they're only on half the time. So say these are 10 milliamps each. Uh, add the total number of them up. I can't remember how many there are. Oh, I think there are 69. No, there can't be 69 because uh, we've got 3, 6, 9, 12, uh, 15, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Oh, it is 69. Yeah, three rows of 23 is 69. Now, the other thing that's quite interesting is you saw these two LEDs come on. Where are the LEDs? Yeah, they're there, D1 and, oh, D1, because they appear to have just repeated the circuit. Okay, yeah, Q2 and Q2, interesting. Yes, that's interesting, because if you were designing this board, it'd be difficult, I think, in most design packages to have two Q2s. But anyway, <laughs> that's what they've done. Um, yes, those lights come on when, of course, there's no load on here. With this... Uh, a set of LEDs. As this thing is charging up, the LEDs start to come on, probably at, I don't know, two or three volts, something like that. And um, you never get to a situation where these two LEDs come on if this uh, board is working and connected to the supercapacitors, because it, it's a calculation based on that 21 watt brake light bulb from 12 volts going into this, which is 5.4 let's just call it five volts, uh, the current that then flows through that circuit um, and the current that these things are pulling out of the supercapacitors, the supercapacitors never actually get up to 5.4 volts. 
And so these two LEDs never actually come on. They only come on if this supercapacitor has no load on it when it's being charged. Now I was thinking that um, to prevent these LEDs working out of this panel, I might put a little dab of glue uh, just around each LED. If I've got a glue that will run around, that'd be quite nice. Um, super glue or something like that. I haven't got any super glue, but I've got some UV glue. So maybe what I'll do is push these in and then just run a little bit of UV glue around this. Leave it out in the sunshine. It is sunny today, as you saw. Um, I've got that faulty LED not working. That's that one. I don't quite know why that's not working. Maybe I'll just prod it a bit, see if it comes back. No, it's not going to come back. So I'm just going to go and get my uh, UV glue, if I can find it. Uh, yes, I found the um, UV glue. This is the K300 stuff, which, as I remember, was a bit slower setting. It's a bit harder to get this to go, uh, well, hard. Um, I think that it's still in a liquid state in there, because uh, it's in a black bottle, so... Yeah, that looks okay. So let's start squirting some of this on the LEDs. Um, oh, it is quite liquid, so it should run round each LED, yes, and form a ring. And then if I can find my UV torch... Uh, oh, is that the one? I think that's it. Yes, that's the UV torch. Don't want to look at that, but... So that should... Um, make the glue solidify. Yeah, I think that should do it. So let's uh, try doing that on all the LEDs. Obviously I'm not going to film it. So here's my technique. I'm just dropping a drop one side, drop the other side, one side, the other side, one side, the other side, left, right, left, right, left, right. So it's pretty quick. That shouldn't take too long. I uh, don't really want to put this face down on the bench now because there's su uh, glue, UV glue on the tops of all these LEDs. It does seem to be soaking into the hardboard quite a lot, as I suppose you'd expect. But I'm going to put, because it's sunny today, I'm going to put this out in the sun for a couple of hours uh, just to let that UV glue harden up. And uh, then have a look at it after that time. So there it is uh, from the patio, still running. Because I really want to discharge the super caps uh, kind of at the same time. Hopefully that will set the UV glue off. Uh, yeah, that's kind of it for this video. Or, or I might tack a bit on the end um, showing when I've got it uh, reinstalled in the shed. In fact, I will do that. In fact, I'm going to shut up now. And that's the uh, supercomputer back in place. Uh, and all the LEDs are working bar one which is that one in the middle of the screen there, but I think I can live with that. Really, what I want is enough load, constant load, so each of these LEDs has a 50% duty cycle, to ensure that the SuperCap protection circuits never come on, so you can see the LEDs don't come on, because it never gets up to 5.4 volts, because I suppose the brighter these LEDs are, the more current they take and eventually you reach an equilibrium. Uh, the scam system is running. The ant miner is talking to Ethernet there. So that's come on. There's even a little bit of uh, solar panel light because the sun's just come out so the current limiter is working. So maybe I'll do a video updating on the scam system as my next video. But uh, yeah, it's just annoying me that the supercomputer wasn't working. Now it is, so that's it. Cheerio!